Hello, thanks so much for joining us for week 21 of Live with Annie. We are so excited to have you here with us. Last week we featured travel bags and we discussed the two main branches of Buy Any Bags and showed the features of a number of our most popular uh, travel bags. We also walked through the steps to make each style of bag. So if you missed it, remember you can find it on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel and you will also find lots of other helpful videos in both of those places. If you're new to Buy Annie Patterns, we would definitely recommend that you watch these three videos. Beautiful bindings, carry-on handles and straps, and zippers are easy. The easiest way to find any of these is to go to YouTube and click on the Videos tab that's at the top. You're going to see that there are live with by Annie or live with Annie videos that have similar titles and those will be helpful too. But if you want the best camera angles and actual stitching, make sure you're getting the videos with those names that don't say Facebook Live. So we have a camera issue on Facebook. We're still live on YouTube. Trevor's trying to fix it, so I'm going to hold up just for a minute. I know the playlist on YouTube, um, the playlist is called Tutorials and How-Tos. Okay, on YouTube, Jake said that the playlist is called Tutorials and what? How-Tos. And How-Tos. So that would be another good place to go to find those. It's the second or third one down, he said. We ready to go, Trevor? Or? Um, no? Not While he's working on that, um, let us know where you're joining us from. I, don't, I assume that you can still comment even though the picture's not there. Um, we've really enjoyed seeing where everyone comes from. We've had people, last week we had someone from China, uh, we've had India and Australia and Norway and Sweden and Germany and all over the place as well as lots of places in the U.S. and Canada too. So I know that for some of you that's a really um, early hour or late hour, so thanks for um, making the effort to join us live and also for watching us again later as well. Any luck? It's a beautiful day in St. George, Utah. We've got a little bit of clouds today, but it's about 90 degrees. We've had down in the 50s and 60s at night. Last night we went to uh, play. We got to see Annie at our amphitheater here in St. George. And it was it's an outdoor amphitheater, so it was about 65 or 70, I think. And really pleasant, uh, really nice evening. The night before, we went to see Annie Get Your Gun at the St. George Musical Theater. And so we've had a lot of culture this week, which has been really enjoyable. Uh, kind of late nights though, so a little hard to get up in the morning when you don't get home from, from the music and musical until midnight. Uh. So are we just starting over? Well, you need to get my script up if you can. Yeah. We've got people from Missouri, Good, good Thursday morning from Australia. Yay. Gail from Arizona. Sweden. Kim from Michigan. Linda from New Mexico. Sandra from Ohio. Sounds like lots of you are joining us, and thank you for that. We're just trying to figure out what's wrong with our pictures so that um, you can see what's going on. It's kind of hard to show you travel bags with no picture. So... Let's give it just another minute here to see what we can do. <coughs> Would it be helpful to just start over, Trevor, or is that possible? Yeah, I'm just going to yeah, come to up and get it to pull up. I have to know. We're close. At least this time it stopped with me. Well, maybe not. 
I saw one where at least I had a smile on my face. I wasn't looking so silly as I did last time it froze on me. Okay. Are we if, going? Uh, yeah, if you're listening, tell them to, if you're on Facebook, to just go to our homepage, I mean our Facebook page, and you can find it there. Okay. So uh, Trevor said that it looks like we're back up. If you're watching on Facebook and you joined it through our link, uh, that's probably not going to work. Just go to our Facebook page and click on the live video there and you should be able to see it there. YouTube's still in good shape. YouTube's still in good shape, all right. So yeah, it'll be. Okay, can you go click on that other, the other screen, Glow, for me? All right. So to thank everyone who joined us last week, um, our giveaway was a round trip duffel pattern and an add-on video. Oh, down, oh, down the other way. Right there. I've got the the notes here of who the winners were, and Glow's trying to find her spot in it. So <laughs> here we go. All right, so we gave away a round-trip duffel pattern and an acrylic base stabilizer to fit in it, and the lucky winner was Donna Eversole. Thank you so much for responding so quickly, Donna. Your price should be arriving in no time. So happy sewing with that one. This week, we're going to talk more about travel bags and accessories to help you travel in style and comfort. We really like making coordinated sets of bags and accessories, and many of the projects that I'm going to show you today are really good for using leftover pieces of quilted fabrics. As we've discussed before, we usually quilt a two yard piece of main and lining fabric to soft and stable, and that enables us to make one large project and a variety of smaller accessories to coordinate it with it. So you'll, you're going to see that in some of the projects that we show today. We're going to start with one of my favorite patterns, which is called Going Places, and it makes a uh, stylish, a um, garment bag. So I'm going to open it up. Hopefully you're going to be able to see this without it hanging too far off the table. So as you can see, this is a big bag. We put a lot of thought into the design of this bag and it has a lot of features that I know you're going to love. So on the front of the bag is a double slide zipper that goes all the way from the top of the to the bottom. So you can open it from the top, you can open it from the bottom, or anywhere in between. It also has borders on the top and the bottom that add interest. If you have an embroidery machine and like to do monograms, this would be a perfect place to put a monogram or a name or something special like that. There is a gusset that connects the front and the back of the bag, which enables the bag to expand or contract. And we stitched fold lines right down the middle of the gusset all the way around. So that encourages it to fold neatly when the bag isn't full or when you're storing it. At the top of that gusset is an opening that allows your hangers to extend so that you can hang it up. And there is also a fabric strap up here that makes a loop so you can, what I like to do is I'm going to pull this out a little bit so you can see it. I like to take it and hook it underneath the top part of my hanger and then bring it back through that opening so that my hangers don't fall down inside. And this gives me either a loop to hang it if I don't have a place where a hanger can go, or I just take this and wrap it around the hangers to keep them secure. So you can hang it either way, either with the hangers or with the fabric loop. All right, as you can see, the zipper enables you to open it really wide to easily put your garments in. And this is going to fit several garments from dresses and gowns to men's suits and formal wear. On the other side of the bag, I'm going to zip this up before I flip it over. On the other side of the bag is a vinyl window that enables you to see what's inside without even opening the bag. We recommend using Biani's premium weight vinyl for this window. It's a 16 gauge vinyl. 
it's flexible and sturdy and it's double polished so it's going to have really good clarity. There are also zippered mesh pockets on the bottom of this side of the bag and you can use those to organize nylons, hairbrushes, toiletries, jewelry, um, whatever you want to put in there. And underneath those pockets is a quilted pocket and this is a perfect place if you want to carry your shoes or other larger items so those will fit in that pocket. And we, we put divisions on these and added extra pulls so in the areas where we've got three pockets we've got separate pulls on each so you can open the middle pocket without having to open the other two. The bag folds in half. Um, to make carrying easy and there is a tab at the bottom that you can hook over the hanger to hold the sides together and then we've added adjustable straps on each side that you can use to carry it over your shoulder or cross body so if you're hurrying through an airport and you want to carry it easily you've got a way to do that as well. Going places is great for taking on vacation but it also would be perfect um, if you've got someone who's, who does dance for taking on the road to dance competitions, uh, choir performances, all kinds of ways to use this bag. So again, this is called Going Places and it's a really fun project to make. I'm gonna have a quick drink of water. The next bag I want to show you is Jet Set 2 and we've talked about this a little in the past um, but this is one that I always take with me. One thing I say is one thing I've really missed about traveling over the past year is the nice naps that I always got on the airplane. My secret to sleeping well on a plane because a lot of people say I can't sleep on an airplane is a round neck pillow because not having my head flopping around to the side really makes all the difference in getting a good rest. So we designed Jet Set in order to be able to carry that pillow. The nice thing is the bag also holds everything I need for the flight, so I can put everything else away, um, you know, either check it or put it in the overhead bin, and I have just one little bag at my side. So inside the bag I put my pillow, my bottle of water, I've got a zippered pocket in the back which is perfect for a book, um, a sweater or a wrap, um, my wallet I'll put in there and everything is nice and safe and secure on the inside. On the outside I put my boarding pass, I usually take my phone and stick it in that pocket so it's easy to access. I've got room for my earbuds, a snack and anything that you want to keep close at hand. There's a padded handle at the top that will either, I can either carry it that way or it's sized big enough so that I can put it over the handles on my rolling luggage. And there's also an adjustable detachable strap if I want to carry it over my shoulder or crossbody. The Jet Set pattern also includes two other small projects that to me are worth the price of the pattern even if you don't make the travel bag and both of these make really quick and easy gifts. So first is a padded handle grip and we designed this to wrap around the existing handle on most standard travel bags. Uh, you can make it out of your favorite fabrics and that makes it easy to spot your bag right away. It also reduces stress on your hands. Um, these are perfect for carrying grocery bags in the house. I wanted to show you. Um, I've got a couple bags here that I came home from the grocery store with and you can loop this through the openings. You've got a nice soft um, carrier and everything's held together and you're not going to lose it. The other nice um, pattern or one that I really love in here is an awesome little bag tag. And I have to tell you this little tag has saved me so much time at the airport because I, all of my suitcases are black and there's always hundreds of black bags coming off the luggage carousel, but I can always spot my bag among them because of the luggage tags that no one else has one that matches the fabrics I've using, used. So there's a hidden pocket on the inside of the tag where you can put a business card or an ID card. And I really like that my personal information is out, not right out in the open for everyone to see, but it's there if anyone needs to, to, to use it. So if you're taking a group trip, 
You can make matching tags for the whole group and save time rounding up everyone's bags at the airport, but you can also use these for lots of other things. So you can put one on your sewing machine, your ruler tote, your camping gear, band instruments, camera cases, backpacks. There's so many ways to use them. So use your imagine, imagination and have some fun with them. I always take a couple tags filled with business cards with me. Uh, it keeps them clean and easy to access. And if you have to carry a lot of loyalty cards, it would be a great way to put all your loyalty cards in one of these. And when you're ready to go, um, you know, you've, you've got them nice and handy. But they're not filling up your wallet. They also make really good gift tags. Here's one that we made using some uh, Christmas fabrics. So you could tie this on to a gift at Christmas time. And, you know, somebody's got a nice way to do that and something useful to use besides. There's lots of ways that you can personalize them. If you do machine embroidery, you could embroider a cute saying here, like mine or check again, it's not your bag. Um, you could make these in the recipient school colors, use a fabric that depicts their hobby or interest, somebody who likes to golf, maybe get some fabric that's, that looks like golf and they can tie it on their golf bags. Um, there's so many ways. And these use just a little bit of fabric and interfacing, so they're really good for using leftover fabric from your sewing projects. There's no hardware needed, there's just a loop at the top, and when you wanna hook it onto your bag, you just take that and go under it and then pull the tag through the loop and you've got it fastened in place. So super easy to use and fun little projects. Another really good um, project for travel, but also good for gifts, are our Diddy bags. And these come in three very practical sizes. They're really good for using leftover quilted fabric. So as you can see, this is the fabric that we used for the going places that I showed you. It's got that pretty stripe on the inside. These two um, were fabrics that we actually made this going places with. So if you're looking for something with maybe a little more masculine vibe, this is, this is a really good one. And both of these are made using that fabric. So on one side, we used the lining side out and the stripes on the inside. This one we used, I think this is the fabric that we used, yes, when we made the jet set. So we had basically three different quilted sets that we made and we made lots of uh, coordinating bags with them. So each of the Diddy bags has a zipper at the top, there's a side loop handle and there's a border on the front. The small one is perfect for beauty supplies, other small, items and this is going to fit well in pretty much anybody's purse or bag. The medium one fits into a little bit larger purse or a tote bag and you can use it to carry tech gear. I love these this size for my cords and my chargers and my mouse for my computer and so it's really nice for all of that and the large one is going to hold bigger things like hairbrushes, bottles, you know, hairspray, things like that. You could use this to organize a diaper bag or you could make it in more masculine fabrics and it would make a great guy's toiletry bag. So a good idea for a Father's Day gift. So that is Diddy Bags. This is another really versatile organizer that's perfect for travel and it's called Power Trip. Several years ago, we were vending at a major quilt show in California. The booth was set up, customers were almost at the door when I realized I'd forgotten the keys to the cash box, which made a very interesting show. Uh, I went home from that show and designed this bag specifically um, to carry everything that we need for a show. So if you look inside, um, if it's something we need for a show, it goes in our power trip. So we've got um, mesh pockets zippered pockets, we've got our barcode scanner, our credit card readers, our keys, name tags, chargers, um, pens, everything that we need. There's a pocket at the back where you, we can put the iPad in, and on this side you could put another iPad if you needed it. This is where I store all the important keys that we need for the storage unit, for the uh, cash box, all of those things. This little bag would also be great for first aid supplies or as an emergency auto kit. 
You could put sewing supplies in here. Kids would like it for their toys and art gear. Uh, there's just so many ways to use it. So there's mesh pockets with fold over elastic to help them expand. There's some elastic down the middle that you can put things in. Um, you can also open your fold over elastic and use it there. Um, and it's all ready to go. The bag zips up nice and easy. And there's another pocket on the outside uh, that you can put in items. We've got extra cords in there. So one thing that I really appreciate about this bag is when we are traveling and usually staying in hotels, if I've got the iPad and all the different things out charging, I lay them all right on top of the power trip, plug them into the wall, and when I'm ready to leave the next morning, everything's right there ready to go and I don't forget to unplug the charger because I've left way too many chargers in, in airports plugs because I didn't see them. So um, everything's ready to go and easy to, easy to access. There's a padded handle at the top that makes it easy to carry and it's really great for organizing everything in a really small amount of space. So that again was Power Trip. If you're just joining us today, uh, we're talking about travel bags and accessories and we've shown several projects that we made using Carrie Bloomston's fabric called Dreamer. I'm going to put this back up over here so you can see it. This is another project that we made using Carrie's fabric. And this is called Road Trip. And this um, multi-purpose tote can be buckled in, filled with snacks, toys, books, games, electronic gear, everything you need. It's going to keep the car clutter free and your passengers occupied. So as you can see, there's lots of bellowed dividers on the inside. Again, these are not pockets. They're open at the bottom, so even big things like this pack of markers go in and go all the way down to the side. You can put big things like water bottles or wipes, and they go all the way down so you're not worrying about them falling over. There's grab handles on each end. There's also an adjustable detachable carrying strap so you can carry it in and out of the house. We even added a back strap here so that you can hook it through the seat belt and attach it there so that you're not worried about it sliding off the seat. So if you've got kids in the car in car seats, uh, this is a great thing to put in between them so they can access all their books and toys and, and keep everything in one space. So that again is called Road Trip. Next we're going to talk about a place for everything. If I can find it, here we go. And this is a fun one that we designed specifically for travel using a fun um, fabric with license plates and postage stamps, all kinds of fun stuff on it. So whether you're traveling to a sewing class or taking a trip around the world, this will be your perfect travel companion. This spacious organizer stores and carries tools and supplies and gives really good visibility and easy access to everything. So it has handles for carrying as well as an adjustable detachable carrying strap. So if you want to carry it over the shoulder or cross body, it's ready to go. There is a zippered pocket on the front and there is a slip pocket that divides into two sections if you want on back. And when you open it, there are even more pockets. So there's two removable pocket pages and they have pockets made out of vinyl or mesh in a variety of styles. So these are going to ensure that you've got a place for everything and everything is in its place when you're ready to travel. You can see here I've filled this side with um, medications. So if you need, um, if you carry a lot of medications or toiletries, this would be a great bag for that. You could also make this a, a first aid kit and have it, you know, ready for a long trip. Everything will be easy to find and access when the emergency strikes. So again, that's a place for everything, which we usually show, show as a way to carry sewing supplies, but great for travel as well. I'm just going to set that one over there so it's cute to look at. All right, now let's talk about some projects that you can use to organize your suitcase. And this is one of my very favorites. Bring up all the sizes here. 
And if you've joined us for other Facebook Lives, you know I have sh shown, shown these before. But these are fun and easy to make and one of the best ways um, to organize your suitcase. So they come in three sizes and they're going to really streamline your packing and minimize your stress. So they're made out of quilted fabric with a lightweight mesh window on top. They hold their shape nicely and they're perfect for sorting and separating everything you need in your suitcase. Uh, this mesh window on top gives breathability. It also makes it easy to see what's inside. So you don't have to dig through the whole suitcase to find your swimsuit and flip-flops when you get to the beach. And you'll be really amazed at how much you can fit into each of these. When I travel, I use the small size for my undies, socks, and bras. And even if I'm gone for a couple weeks, everything fits inside there. I roll my pants up and put them in the medium one. And in the large one, I have all my shirts and jackets on hangers. I fold those in half or in thirds and put them in here. It makes it really easy when I get to the hotel because I can just lift the hangers up hang them up and I'm ready to go. And I'll often take an extra small or medium with my jewelry, my glow and go with my makeup, all my toiletries inside that so that everything's compact in one place. I really appreciate these when I'm traveling through the airport because if TSA opens my bag and goes through it, they can see what's in there and, and you know I'm not gonna have things falling out and worried about losing things. When I get to the hotel, it's really easy to unpack. Usually I just take these out of the suitcase, open the lid, and put them, you know, right in the drawer. So I'm not worried about dirty drawers, and I just use them from there. So I wanted to show you this cute set. This is made from a new fabric we got from Timeless Treasures called Pardon My French. So it's got scenes of Paris on it, the Eiffel Tower. There's one that's called My Boudoir that has all the ladies, um, you know, everything that you'd need for packing, and that makes just a really fun set. So we did kind of neutral linings on each one, and uh, but co color coordinated those for a really fun set. This also is a new fabric from Timeless Treasures called Welcome to the Beach, perfect for summertime trips. So if you travel in an RV, you will really love these for organizing all your clothes and supplies or for carrying your sewing projects with you too. And as you can see, the ones I just put down, when they're empty, they nest inside each other so they're going to save space. Packet ends make really great gifts uh, for anyone who travels or just has stuff to store. One thing I did want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, we are in the process of updating the packet end pattern. And the main reason we're doing it is so that we can include an add-on video with the pattern. But we've updated the instructions so they have our latest layout and design. We have not changed the design or sizes of the bags at all. So if you want the help of a video, you may want to wait until fall to purchase the pattern. But if you need packing cubes now, I can tell you that we and others have made lots of projects using the pattern as it is, and I know you will have great results too. No. Someone asked, have, uh, have I ever had trouble with, with items being soiled by anything because of the mesh? I, I don't know if they mean because it's open and things would get through the holes. I mean, maybe it depends on where you're using it. But you could certainly use vinyl if you want it in place of that. It might be a little bit more difficult because on those, you're sewing the zipper straight to the lid. And, and you've got to have some flexibility as you go around. But as far as the mesh bothering what's in there, our mesh has a really soft feel. I've never had it snag on anything or cause any troubles like that. I really love using the mesh because I can see what's inside so easily and I know that everything's going to breathe in there. So especially when I'm traveling and my dirty clothes goes back in there, it's nice to know that it's got a little air going in and out. Here's another really good way to organize things in your suitcase, and these are our pocket packers. These, this pattern includes bags in four styles. So we've got, each one of them has a full mesh pocket on the back, 
and then we have a variety of styles for the front so you can do one big pocket you can divide that in half and do two pockets you can divide that into three pockets or you can do four pockets and any of those pockets can be further divided so on here we divided this one into two so these are awesome for carrying and organizing all kinds of things in the suitcase or just at home um, the pockets can be made are made of vinyl on the front so you can really see what's in there and mesh on the back and then we've got two different styles of handle you can either do a short handle if you just want to carry it by hand or a longer handle if you want to carry it over the shoulder we size these to fit perfectly in luggage so if you've got a smaller carry-on you can put these in and stack them this way but they will fit if you've got a standard size suitcase you can put two of them next to each other and those will fit in most standard suitcases so use them for clothes toiletries uh, projects there's so many ways you can use them you might notice that on this set we just used one piece of quilted fabric and on a couple of them we used the pink butterflies as the main fabric and on the other two we flipped those and used that on the back and used what was the lining on these on the front so it gives you a fun coordinated set but you only had to quilt one piece of fabric and then as you can see we had lots of fun playing with different colors of zippers and using a variety of colors to coordinate with the fabrics and add some interest all right last but not least here's another perfect travel accessory this is called travel essentials and this pattern features a hanging organizer that folds up nice and compactly to fit in your suitcase and a coordinating flat iron sleeve so when you open the organizer it can hang up so it's got a mesh pocket at top two vinyl pockets and a nice deep pocket at the bottom this is perfect for your bottles you know pill bottles hairspray toothpaste tubes any of those larger items but as you can see it folds up to a really compact slot size and closes with a swivel hook so it's easy to put in the suitcase you can make it with just the handle that's at the top or you can add an adjustable carrying strap and carry it over the shoulder or crossbody. The sleeve that comes in the pattern is great for curling irons or flat irons and it's got two compartments so I put my flat iron in the back sleeve and then I put the cord in the outer sleeve. And Soft and Stable has really great insulative qualities so you don't need to use Inselbrite or any of those reflective materials on the inside. This is just two layers of quilted fabric made by quilting main and lining fabrics to soft and stable and that even if you put this in when it's still hot uh, you're not going to worry about problems with that travel essentials would also really be great for transporting sewing supplies and projects to class and you can put your rotary cutters thread spray starch project pieces in there and then you could use this for rotary cutters or your little clover mini iron um, lots of ways to use that like pack it in this is a pattern that we are updating and i want it to give you a little sneak peek at the new version for the most part it's going to look just like the older one uh, we've added a pocket on the outside and we have changed how the um, pockets on the inside are attached to avoid a few of the stitching lines on the outside so instead of having a facing in between here we've just done bindings on the pocket but other than that it's very very much the same so if again we've put in our newest layout and design and we've done much better illustrations so we've got a professional graphic artist who's doing the illustrations on these and we will film an add-on video to go with it so if you want a little help uh, with better illustrations and an add-on video we're hoping this pattern uh, will be available this fall um, but again we've made lots of these and others have made lots of these so if you want it now you can feel confident using the pattern as it is and I just wanted to show you this we've got the little clover mini iron in here we did um, slightly increase the size of the flat iron or the hot tool sleeve 
in the new version, uh, we found that um, curling irons and flat irons are growing. And so by having this just a little bit taller, uh, it fits in there a little bit better. So that's Travel Essentials and the new version that will be available in the fall. So as you probably noticed, all the projects we showed today feature zippers, several zippers in many cases. And those zippers are attached to quilted fabric, vinyl, and mesh. Rather than go through those techniques today, I want to refer you to our Zippers Are Easy video tutorial because it has lots of helpful information about making and attaching zippers and some really good video footage that shows the actual stitching. You will find the Zippers Are Easy video on our YouTube channel or in the public videos section of your digital library. And if you access it on the YouTube channel, below the video there's a description um, section. If you expand that, you will see timestamps for the various parts of the video. So if you just want to learn how to attach zippers to mesh or vinyl, you can go straight to that section. But I want to take a minute today to walk you through the steps for attaching the zipper on the bottom pocket in Travel Essentials. Let me grab that and bring that back up here. So I often will take Travel Essentials to a show and we'll have it hanging in the booth. And I have people who, first of all, want to buy the bag. Um, when I tell them they, they, that we don't sell it, we just sell the patterns, they say, oh, I don't do zippers. And I sure can't put a zipper in a curved edge like that. So I really love showing them how simple it is to do this. And that's what I want to show you today, too. So when you make that pocket, it starts with three rectangles of fabric. So this is the rectangle that becomes the body of the pocket. And then we have two more, one that becomes the bottom and one that becomes the top. So again, this is the body of the pocket. We have a rectangle that makes the top and a rectangle that makes the bottom. So the first thing that you're going to do is round two corners on both the top and the bottom. You don't want to round all of them. You just want to round these, round these two and that's where you're going to attach the bag to your pocket. So I like to use our circle rulers for that. And again, as we've discussed in lots of our other videos, um, you want to, if I tell you to use a two and a half inch circle, you want to make sure you're using a two and a half inch circle because the length of this has to match the length of this for the pieces to fit together properly. So round two corners on the top and the bottom, and then you're ready to attach your zipper. And when I do this, I let my zipper hang out on each end. We usually use a 24 inch zipper for this. And I let at least a few inches hang out on each end, a little more on the end where the poles are. And I just put my zipper down with my right sides together and I let it extend just a little bit beyond the fabric all the way around. So about an eighth of an inch or so. And then I just start sewing. And as I go around the curves, I just ease the zipper tape around the curved edges. So there I've got my zipper attached and now we want to do something to finish off all these raw edges. So then what you're going to do is finger press your zipper tape down flat against your lining side and stitch right along the very edge of the zipper tape. As you get to these areas where you rounded it, you're going to have some extra bulk in there and you can just fold some little pleats in it and stitch those down. I've had people say, well, do you clip it? And no, we do not. Zipper tape frays really, really easily when it's clipped, and I don't want to worry about my zipper tape fraying and losing my zipper, so we just fold the little pleats in it. So when we're done, it's going to look like this. Can you see that? Hold it still for a sec. How about that way? Would that make it easier? You can see it? Okay, good. So I've sewn all the way around the rounded edge, put a few pleats in there, and now I've got my zipper attached to the top and I'm ready to join this to the pocket. And you're going to look at that and say, where do I start? And here's, I think, uh, a really easy way to describe that. So when we're done, we want to have this sewn to this all the way around. So the easiest way that I found is to take my top and put it down so that my right sides are together. And I'm going to, I have to 
think about this for a minute. I have to turn it around and look at it at me. I'm going to bring this edge. Here we go. I'm, it's, it's the zipper that I want to clip to the top of my pocket. So I'm going to bring the top of the zipper up with the edge, letting it again extend that little bit. And I'm going to make sure that the straight line formed by the top of my pocket aligns with the side of my of this part of my pocket, so the body of my pocket. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to put a little wonder clip there to hold it. And then I'm going to turn it around over to this side and I'm going to do the very same thing. So I've got the side of the pocket aligned with the top of the lid and I'm going to clip that in place. Now I could go find my wonder clips and finish wonder clipping this all the way around and try fighting with that curve when I go to sew it. But because we have used this longer zipper, all we have to do is open our zipper. We can get that out of the way and, and you can see this is going to fit perfectly on here. And now we just sew this line across here. Once that line is sewn, we'll finger press it to the other side, stitch along the edge, zip our lid back up and we can sew the bottom in, bind it, and attach it to the bag. So really super easy to do. If you need uh, another view of that, our zippers are easy original videos. There's a section that says attaching a zipper to a curved edge. It's going to walk you through that process as well. So I hope you enjoyed seeing all these travel bags and accessories and that as you've seen them you've found a new projects that you can work on this summer. All of the bags that we showed today are perfect for travel. They also make great gifts. So this is the perfect time to get started on your holiday gift list. We've got a few um, new products to show you, or a new product to show you today, and then we're going to answer questions. Um, give me one second to dig some other bags out here. Got that? Hope I didn't hurt your ears with that. So many of you have asked about the leather labels that we use on our bags and purses. Do I have anything here? Our little byani.com labels. And uh, you've, you've wanted something like that. So I'm really happy to announce today uh, that we finally have some really classy label, leather labels available for you to use. These labels feature our really stylish but kind of subdued by Annie logo. It's just a buy with an A on it. And it's the same logo that's imprinted on our hardware and zipper slides now. These are an inch high, an inch and three quarter wide. They're made out of pliable leather and they all have holes on each side uh, so you can easily sew it to your finished project. And we have them in sets of five in six colors. So we've got gray, navy, which is this one, red, rawhide, dark brown, and dark green. And as you can see, they work well on any variety of sizes of projects. So here we've got a small one on our clam up bag. Here we have one on our uh, medium sized bag, like in a place for everything. And here's um, one on a larger bag, like an ultimate travel bag. So they really add a nice stylish finishing touch to either small or large projects. And here's another little tip. Uh, we've talked before about our dome needle threaded, threaded needle case. If you keep a needle threaded with the colors of the leather labels that you have, you'll always have a threaded needle handy when you're ready to attach the label to your project. And again, this is a little case that holds up to 10 needles with thread on them. You just, oh, I've got this one stuck. There we go. So you can thread your needle, sew your label on when you're ready to put it away. I've got to find the slot. You slide it into one of these slots. You take the thread and insert it into the groove on the side, and then you just wind it up. And so you don't have loose thread hanging out and your project's ready to go. So it makes it really easy 
to not have tangled threads. And if, you know, this is perfect in anyone's sewing, sewing kit. If you've got, you know, mothers who like to sew but have th trouble threading needles, uh, this is a great gift for them. And again, as a reminder, be sure to check with your local quilt shop for any of the patterns and products that we showed today. If they don't have them, they can certainly get them either from us or their favorite distributor. Uh, we were really tickled this week to receive an email from Elaine H. Uh, she had recently watched the Live with Annie video in which we showcased the winners in our 2021 local quilt shop contest. And as she was watching, Elaine discovered that the number three shop was less than an hour away from her and she'd had no idea that it even existed. Elaine said, well, that was the perfect excuse for a Saturday shopping trip and I was certainly not disappointed. The ladies at Beyond the Stitches were as cheerful, helpful, and delightful as you described, and the store and classroom as wonderful in both content and selection. I know I'll be adding to my stash regularly, and then she said, okay, I didn't exactly go home empty-handed on Saturday, and I can't wait to attend a class with Pam. What a treasure to find a source of Fianni zippers and mesh and patterns. Your shipping has always been wonderful, but now I have a local quilt shop to support and instant gratification to enjoy. I wouldn't have known the store was there at all if not for your contest and videos. Thank you. And we want to say thank you, Elaine, for sharing that story. I am so glad that we were able to connect you with Dondi and the crew at Beyond the Stitches. And thank you to everyone for supporting your local quilt shops and to local quilt shops for being there to provide inspiration and support. So keep up the good work, everyone. Let's go now to some of the questions that we didn't get to during last week's Facebook Live or that came in over the past week. And I'm going to move some of this out of the way because I have a couple things I want to show you. So again, last week we talked about travel bags. We covered some of the basic steps for making our bags. Many of you said you appreciated the tip about sewing bags with whichever piece has rounded edges on the bottom and the piece that has to conform to those curves on top. And that really is a game changer, so be sure you try it on your next project. There were also several people who said they appreciated learning how to insert base stabilizers in bags that have attached sleeves. And turning the bag inside out is the real secret there. I gotta have a drink of water, my mouth's getting really dry. So again, if you missed any of those tips last week, uh, go to our YouTube channel or our Facebook page and watch our week 20 Live with Annie presentation. All right, the next question, Amy asked, can the Travel Duffel 2 be used as a carry-on? And I forgot to bring one of those in here, but Travel Duffel 2 is, is our biggest duffel. And when we designed that bag, we checked airline restrictions for all the major US airlines, and it was carry-on compliant. Yesterday, I talked with my awesome tech editor, Leslie, and she did another quick check of a lot of airlines, and again, she found that the size is carry-on compliant for most airlines. That said, regulations can change, so we always suggest that you check the size restrictions for the airline on which you'll be traveling to be sure. But note, too, that since these bags have soft sides, most of them, them can be compressed to fit in a smaller area, providing you haven't packed them all the way to the limit. Kathy asked, what pins do you use? My pins bend. And that is such a good question. We use two types of pins. So um, the ones that we use when we're pinning pieces of quilted fabric are the yellow headed extra long quilting pins. I like these because they're really strong and sturdy, and even if I'm pinning several layers, they're going to go through it and not bend. If I'm pinning just a few layers of fabric, however, I much prefer to use extra fine pins. And so these might be called silk pins, uh, but they're a much thinner pin, and when you put those that through your layers of fabric, it doesn't distort it the way the heavier pins like the yellow pins can. I go so far as to keep each pin in its own wool pin cushion so they're always easy to access. So that means I need two pin cushions on my work table, two pin cushions at my machine. And it's a good thing these wool pin cushions are easy and fun to make. 
You'll find instructions for these in our needle case and wool pincushion pattern uh, that's uh, available at our website or at your local quilt shop. Carol asked, what weight of thread do you use for bag making? And we use basically the same thread for everything. Our favorite thread for quilting, assembly, uh, basically any sewing that we do. If I was sewing garments, this is the thread I was used, would use is Sew Fine number 50. So it's a spun polyester thread. It's extra smooth. It has no lint at all. So you don't have to clean out your sewing machine so often. And it has a little bit of a stretch, which makes it really ideal for seams that bear weight. Uh, it's a 50 weight polyester. It comes in 134 colors and it's available on both a 500 yard spool and a cost effective 3,280 yard spool. So a lot of people look at the price of this and say it's too expensive, but they're comparing it to the price of a spool that may look the same, but may only have 100 yards on it. So you're getting lots and lots of thread on here, and it's an excellent value and just a really good quality thread. So it's made by Superior Threads. Uh, you can find it at their website or you know online or check with, check with your local store to see if they have it as well. Tracy asked, is there a reason you put buttons on the bottom of the Ultimate Travel Bag but not on Travel Duffel? And nope, we just didn't think about it on the travel duffel. You can certainly use that technique on any bag that has a flat bottom. Just keep in mind that if the bag has an attached stabilizer sleeve, as does Ultimate Travel, you have to attach them before you attach that sleeve. Otherwise, when you sew the buttons on, you're sewing through the sleeve and then you can't get your base stabilizer in. So pay attention to the pattern if it gives instructions for that. Um, Diane and Nancy had asked last week about binding. Uh, they said, Diane said, I still have problems joining the ends of bias binding on a project. And Nancy says, I get more than a quarter inch dog ear when I'm trying to join those. And I tried to answer that question last week, but I was missing the step out, which I later found on my cutting table upstairs. So I brought it today and I thought I'd just run through this quickly. So when you want to join two ends, you um, you want to fold one over and you want to be sure that you have a quarter inch dog ear on each side so that when you open the strips up, so that when you open the strips out, you have a nice straight piece. And I will admit that when I started, I found that really hard to do too. So my solution to that was to mark a quarter inch seam allowance on the piece that was going to go on top. And then when I aligned it on top of the other one, I could see right where it needed to go. So basically, you want this line to line up with the cleavage on each side. So you can see my, my little arrow forming there and my little arrow forming there line right up with my points. That way, when I sew right along that line and open it, I'm going to have a nice straight piece. Uh, another note Leslie I saw had commented to someone last week, if you're consistently having troubles with the ends li not lining up, double check and make sure that you've cut your strips accurately because both of these strips have to be the same width for this to work. And that's one of the reasons we like making bias binding the way we do. By cutting the strips with a rotary cutter and ruler, we're sure that we're going to get really nice accurate strips every time. So thank you again, all of you, for joining us today to help you travel in style and keep everything organized. We've got two fun giveaways, and we are going to do two pocket packer patterns, which also include uh, coupons for the add-on videos. So we'll have two winners. They'll each get the pattern. They'll each get a package of our premium weight vinyl, and then they'll get a package of our new leather labels. So there's enough in here to put one on each bag if you make all four styles and you'll have one left over for another project. So again, those come in six different colors. If you have a preference for what color of labels you want, just let Trevor know when he notifies you that you're a winner and we'll send you the color of your choice. Again, to win, um, here's what you have to do. And remember, this doesn't work on YouTube, so you have to do it on Facebook. First, leave a comment. Tell us something you learned today or if you have some tips to share, which travel bag you want to make, um, or if there's another size or style of travel bag 
uh, for which you'd like a Biani pattern, give us a note on that too. And second, tag a friend, because we really want to spread the word about our weekly lives. So if you know somebody who would enjoy it, uh, please share it with them. And to tag, if you're not familiar with that, you type the at symbol and then their name that they use on Facebook. Their picture and name will pop up so you can confirm that it's the right person. You click on that, add your comment, and then submit it. We will pick winners from all the comments that are made by midnight mountain time tonight. So you've got about nine more hours to watch and comment. And finally, remember to check your Facebook messages. Uh, Trevor will notify our winners and ask you to email your shipping address. And again, remember you can let him know what color of leather labels you'd like then. So thank you again for joining us. We'll be back next week at 2 p.m. Mountain Time uh, to talk about another set of bags that are perfect for travel backpacks. Um, thank you again. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Uh, until then, happy stitching. <laughs>